Hey, what's up Blender users? I'm Jonathan and in today's video I'm gonna show you how to create this scene in Blender and you can already see that we have some fracturing going on as well as an integrated explosion from Houdini. And by the way, if you enjoy my content consider subscribing because I upload a new video every Saturday. And with all that said and done, let's get straight into the video. To start off, we have to download two separate Blender branches. Both of them are linked in the video description. One of them is this one right here. This is the extra object types branch for Blender 2.83. And we will need later on the fracture modifier branch in 2.79. Okay, you can already see that I imported this wall model from Quixel Megascans. We can just quickly preview it and we can see that all the materials are linked correctly. There are a lot of tutorials online on how to do that, so just check them out. For the scene, I used a ground, and for this I'm just gonna use a cube, move it down by one meter, and scale it on the x and y axis, so we have some actual geometry to work with. For its material, I used an image texture, which is already integrated into Blender. We can just search for image texture, click new, and select UV grid. Hit OK, and once we plug the color output into the base color input, we can start to see our UV grid. If you have the node wrangler add-on enabled, you can control click on this node and scale down the texture just like this. I also fed it into a color ramp to get a black and white image and then played around with the black and white values till I get something like this. Next, we will need a collider to actually destroy our wall. We can easily do this by just adding a sphere, scaling it down, and for the first frame I'm gonna move it behind this wall, just like this. Now I will insert a location keyframe, go to about frame 10, move it in front of the wall and up, just like this, and add in a location keyframe as well. So now we can see that we get this animation. Great. Now we will go over to Blender 2.79, but first of all, let's save our file. Once we are in Blender 2.79, we want to open our scene. We can't open the whole Blend file, so we have to append the different objects. So go to Append, select your Blend file, Objects, and select all your objects. So now click Append from Library, and we can see that we get our scene right here. And we can already play it and see that everything is working correctly. Now we have to specify all the physics. So select your ground, go over to the physics panel and select rigid body passive because this ground will not change and will only collide with our fractured object. I also want to turn the friction to 1. Select the sphere, rigid body and leave it at active but enable animated. And now for the fracturing, select the wall and enable fracture. We can now just go ahead and execute the fracture and you can see that we get some weird artifacts in our mesh but this is for now okay. And we can just play our animation and we can see that this works kind of as we want it to. Of course the shards are way too big. So let's fix this and I'm gonna give it a shard count of 500 for now. And you can just hit execute fracture again. Okay great, you can already see that we have less artifacts and they're gonna get less and less with a higher shard count. But for now we can just preview this animation and we can see that this kind of works like we wanted to. But there's one issue, because the wall starts breaking apart before the ball actually hits it. So to fix this we can just go into the fracture helper and enable triggered and animated. Now the wall will not break until the ball actually hits it. So we can preview it. And this doesn't work for now because we still have to select the ball and enable trigger. So now this gets actually smashed apart. But there is one issue because I want this whole wall to dissolve once the ball hits it and I don't only want these few parts here to fracture. So for this we can just enable constraints. So enable use constraints and enable also self collision and constraint collision. Once we now play it, we can see that all the different shards are sticking together. I found that the use compounds method works best for me in this case, 
So once I enable it, they start to fall apart as before. And now to get a result we want, we want to enable activate broken and also put the threshold down to 1 as well as putting in an angle of 150 down here. This means that they will fall apart once they hit this angle of deformation. So if we now play this animation we can see that the wall starts to dissolve. Great. Because we don't want to render this in Blender 2.79 and we also want to import volumes back into our scene, we want to export all the models right here. So shift select every model and we can now just search for Alembic and hit export Alembic. Now we want to export selected objects only and disable renderable objects only and we also want to export the face sets but not the normals. This will mess with our model and won't look good in Blender 2.8. And because we don't have any particle systems we can also uncheck export hair and particles. Now just find a folder where you want to export your ABC file to and hit export Alembic. This can take a while, it really depends on your scene. Okay, once it's exported, we can just hop back into Blender 2.83 and import our Alembic file there. Okay, I will just make a new collection for this to import in and go back into the solid view. And now hit File, Import and Alembic. Search for your file and hit Import Alembic, just like that. And you can see that something hasn't really worked with our model. We can easily fix this normals issue by going to the object data properties panel and enable auto smooth under normals, just like that. And if we now play this animation, we can see that we also have the fracture in Blender 2.83. In this tutorial, I won't show you how to create an Houdini explosion because I already have a tutorial for this on my channel. Okay, for the explosion, you will just have to export your sphere collider right here. And I would not export the one you imported back as an Alembic file, but the one you created earlier. This is also the only thing you need. And then you can just do everything I showed you in this tutorial. Import it back into Blender and you are ready to render your animation. Okay, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. And if you did, consider liking and subscribing. And we're gonna see us in the next video.